Training Stable Diffusion is incredibly easy, and with LoRa you can train any objects you want using your own images. And today I'm gonna show you how. Hello humans, my name is Kenyo Air Overload, and welcome to the fourth video in the LoRa training series. Now once again, this video will be an add-on to my first general LoRa training video, so if you haven't watched that video, you absolutely need to watch it first. I also have now an entire LoRa playlist that you can watch that will teach you how to train anything you want in Stable Diffusion using LoRa. So that being said, if you watched my previous video, Video, you should know that to train a LoRa, you need a few things. The first is of course to install the training software called Koya SS GUI. Now once again in this video I'm not gonna show you how to install it manually because I showed how to do that in my previous LoRa video, but if you don't want to do it manually I created a simple to use one click installer for my Patreon supporters that will install everything automatically, as well as a one click stable diffusion installer that once again will install absolutely everything in one single click. You don't need to do anything. And the link for those installers will be in the description down below. So once we have Koya SS installed, we can start the first step for the LoRa object training, which is data set preparation. Now the first thing that you want to do is go on Google and search for the object that you want to train. And for this, you can either use Google Images or the Google Advanced Image Search. And here your goal is to choose around 10 to 20 images that are of high resolution and high quality and that represent the object in every angle. And to choose high resolution images, you can either click here on Tools, then click on Size and choose an Large, which will display images of high resolution. Or you can use the advanced image search, input your keywords, and then under image size, choose anything larger than 2 megapixel and click on advanced search. And then once again, save around 10 to 20 images onto your computer. So once you have a nice selection of 10 20 images of your object, the next step is to make the images even better. And to do that, we're actually gonna remove the background of those images. And to easily do that, and for free, you can use a website called photoroom.com that will basically remove the background of your images using AI. And it is actually really, really good. You're just gonna select one of your images and then drag and drop it onto the website. And then in only a few seconds, the entire background has been removed automatically. And you can even change the color of the background by clicking on those colors right here. And to make things easier, you can just click on this white background right here to only have a simple plain white background. And then finally click on download. And then you're gonna do the same for the next images. Now, technically this step is optional. You don't really have to do it if you don't want to, but this actually allows you to double the amount of images that you have for training. And the more images that you have, the better the final model is gonna be. So once you've done this, the next step is to actually upscale the images to make them even sharper and better than before. And for this, you're gonna launch Stable Diffusion with the Automatic 1111, go to the Extras tab, click on Batch from Directory, go to the folder where your images are located, then copy the folder path, paste it right here, and then do the same for the Output Directory, and then copy and paste it right here. Here you're gonna leave 4 by default, and for the Upscale, you're gonna choose the RES organ for X+, plus, and then click on Generate. So after a few minutes, you should now have a bunch of images that are the upscaled version of the images that you had before. Now, if you wonder why I have a double of all of these images, it's because of this little option right here. Basically, if the image is a little too big, it's gonna save a copy of it as a JPEG file, which is perfect because this is exactly what we want. We want high resolution images, but we also want it optimized as much as possible. So here, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete all the PNG files. And there you go. Now we have a pretty nice selection of images of the object that we want to train. So now the next step is to open the Koya SS GUI and input a configuration file if you are one of my Patreon supporters. Because yes, if you are one of my Patreon supporters right now, you will receive 5 different configuration files that you can use for LoRa object training, as well as exclusive LoRas that you will not find anywhere else. The link for it will be in the description down below. So if you are one of my Patreon supporters, you're gonna click on LoRa, click on configuration file, then click open, and then you're gonna choose one of those presets. And if this is your first time, I highly recommend just choosing the normal Stable Diffusion Excel object.json and then click open. And now if you check the parameters, all the best training parameters will already be chosen for you. You really don't need to do anything. The only thing that you need is to choose the Stable Diffusion Excel model. So just click right here, choose your Stable Diffusion Excel file. And then the last thing that we need is to fill in the location of our training folder. And to create the training folder, we're gonna use the dataset preparation tab. Now once again, I'm not gonna explain everything. If you don't know what any of these terms means, once again I highly recommend that you watch my first LoRa training video. I really explain everything there. Now here today for object training, for the instance prompt and class prompt, you're gonna input what is the closest object to the object that you want to train. So like here in our example, we are trying to train this Nordic Viking beer mug that is kind of made of wood and metal. So like for example, if you go inside Stable Diffusion and you generate an image of a man holding a wooden beer mug, you can see that the shape and size is very 
very similar to the object that we want to train. So simply put in here, wooden beer mug is good enough as a base for training. But of course, once again, depending on the object that you want to train, you always want to put the closest object to the one you want to train, and that is known by stable diffusion. So in here for the training images, you're gonna select the folder with the upscaled images. For the repeats number, as always, you're gonna input 20, which is kinda like the golden number for training. But if you want, you can even increase that number to something like 25, if you want a model that is a little bit more precise, but maybe less flexible. But otherwise, a repeat of 20 is more than enough. And once again, for the regularization images, if you're not training a person, these are definitely very optional. And then finally, choose the destination directory, in my case it is right here, and then click on prepare training data. And also do not forget to click on this button right here to copy all of this information into the folders tab. Because as you can see now, in the folders tab, I've now been filled in. And the last thing we need to do is to name our model. And for this, I always recommend inputting the name of the instance prompt and the class prompt that you use for the training. This way you will never forget the trigger words. So in my case it is wooden beer mug. So then next, the last thing we need before we start the training is to caption our images, which is basically where you're gonna go and create a text file for each image where you describe what the image is supposed to be. And to help us do this a little bit faster, we're gonna use bleep captioning. So if you click on utilities, then bleep captioning, and then select the folders of where your images are located. So in my case, it is right here. I will then here input a prefix, which is the instance prompt and class prompt, followed by a comma. And then if I click on caption images, bleep is gonna analyze all the images and then create a text file for each one that will basically try its best to describe what the image looks like. But unfortunately, since it's not very precise, we're gonna have to do it ourselves. But don't worry, it's actually very easy, especially in our case. All you need to do is go back to the Koya SS GUI, copy our image folder path, click on manual captioning, paste the folder path right here, and then click on load. And then it will basically load all the images on one side and its caption on the other. And then what you're gonna do is for each image, try to caption it as best as you can. But since we are training a simple object, the captioning should be pretty fast. So like for example for this image, it should simply be photo of a wooden beer mug, plain white background. Simple as that. And then you're gonna do the same for each one of those images. And do not forget that you have multiple pages, because you really need to caption each and every one of them. But as long as the background is not too complex, the captioning should be really really fast. And by doing this, all the text files inside the folder will be updated automatically. And so then once we are done, we can go back to the LoRa tab, and again if you are one of my Patreon supporters and you have access to the training files, you can already start the training right now because all the parameters will already be chosen for you. But otherwise, I will still explain a few parameters. Now here for training an object LoRa, for the training batch size, you're gonna choose either one or two. Now here, basically, if you have less than 15 images, I highly recommend putting the batch size at one because otherwise it's not gonna be as precise. But if you have more than 15 images, you can put that batch size at two. It's gonna make the training much, much faster. Faster. But at the same time, it will also use a little bit more VRAM. So if you get a CUDA out of memory error, then in that case, put that number at 1. Now for the number of epoch, usually I recommend a number between 10 and 15. But actually for object training, in my experience, I never had an object that was better after 10 epoch. So unless you want a bunch of models to choose from, just input that number at 10. 10 epoch will be usually more than enough. Again, for the mixed precision and safe precision, if you have a 3000 series graphics card or new Newer, you're gonna input BF16 for both. Otherwise, if it is an older graphics card, you're gonna input FP16 for both. Now, in my case, since I have a 3090, I'm gonna input BF16. Then check cache latent and cache latent to disk. For the learning rate scheduler and optimizer, you're gonna choose constant and add a factor. Then input those extra arguments that I will leave in the description down below. Now, for the learning rate, for object training, I like a low learning rate between 0.002 and 0.0005, with usually a preference between 0.0002 and 0.0003, because otherwise, if you don't have a lot of training images, you're gonna overtrain really really quickly. So keep that learning rate around that number. For the max resolution, keep it at default, 1024 by 1024, but you can also use 786 by 786, it will also work fine, and it will also use this VRAM for training. Then check enable buckets. This is the reason why we don't need to crop our images, so keep that checked in. For the text encoder learning rate and unit learning rate, keep it the same as the learning rate right here, then leave everything by default, and then for the network rank and network alpha, I always recommend 128 for the network rank and 1 for network alpha. But since we are training an object, you can actually decrease the network rank a little bit to something like 64 and have a smaller LoRa file, but still keep a lot of the details. However, personally, I still like to keep this number above 
128. So then in the advanced tab, you're gonna leave pretty much everything by default. Make sure that you select gradient checkpointing and X-formers for cross attention. And unless you have an object that is symmetrical with only one color, you can also check those two options as well. But otherwise, just leave them unchecked. And then finally, once we are done, we are finally ready to start the training. In my case, it will take around one hour to train. Now, I'm not gonna do it because I've already done it before. But once this is done, all the models will be saved in the output folder. And once again, as always, if your GPU is not powerful enough, or if you don't have a GPU at all, you can rent a GPU on a website like Rumpod and do the training there. Again, I show how to do that in my previous LoRa training video. And once you're done, it is time to find the best model possible. So once again, exactly like I showed in my first video, you're gonna come here and write a prompt, photo of a wooden beer mug on a table, then you're gonna click on LoRa, click on each one of those LoRa's so that they all appear in the prompt, then select all of them, Control c to copy them, and delete everything except the first one, then go to script, XYZ plot, for the X type you're gonna choose prompt S slash R, and then you're gonna paste all the values right here. And then after each LoRa, you're gonna input a comma. So comma here, comma here, here, etc, etc. And there you go. And once this is done, all you need to do is just click on generate and wait for the images to be generated. And there you go. And then you're gonna generate a bunch more images to see which one of the models you prefer. Now, sometimes, no matter what you do, Stable Diffusion will have trouble generating images of your object being used by another person. Now, if you don't want that, here's two things that you can do. First, make sure that you include images of real people using the product. This way, it gives a better sense of scale on how big the object is supposed to look like compared to a real person. And if you can't do that, you can simply use inpainting. First, select the image of a person holding or using a similar mug, and then use your brush to paint over the object Object, basically everything that you want to change, then you're gonna change the prompt and only leave the token of the LoRa, so in our case it is wooden beer mug. Here for the input area you're gonna choose only masked, input a pretty high resolution, so something like 1024 by 1024, use a denoising strength between 0.5 and 0.75, so something like maybe 0.6 should be good enough, and then start generating your images, which in the end should give you this kind of image. And if you want, even with a little bit of Photoshop, you can make it even better. Everything depends on what you want to achieve. So yeah, there you go. Now you should know everything there is to know on how to train objects with LoRa for stable diffusion. And if you have any issues, just know that if you are one of my Patreon supporters, you have access to priority support on both Patreon and on the private Discord channel where you can ask me questions and I will try to answer them as quickly as possible. So that being said, try this out yourself and have some fun. And there we are with folks. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you also so much to my Patreon supporters for supporting my videos. You guys are absolutely awesome. You people are literally the reason why I'm able to make these videos, so thank you so much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.